skinny fat. Ever heard of that concept? That's when a person looks perfectly healthy, not overweight, at least on the outside. It's surprisingly common, especially after women go through menopause. You won't see this kind of fat in the mirror, and it might even be that your clothes sorta still fit. But you could be gaining weight in places that just don't show. The main hormone behind skinny fat is what makes you fat on the inside. The medical term for that is visceral fat, and it's a really big deal. After menopause, a combination of hormones that are definitely not optimal cause your body to store more fat deep in your belly around your internal organs. Visceral fat, the kind that wraps around your kidneys, your liver, your intestines, that can dramatically raise your risk of heart disease, diabetes, and stroke. If you've been gaining weight, especially belly weight, even while eating healthy and exercising, this hidden fat might be the reason why. Stick with me to the end of this video, and I'm going to let you in on a dead simple strategy that can make a big difference in skinny fat. It's 100% free. There's no gym, no calorie counting, no changes to your diet even. But it's shockingly effective at helping to optimize that hormone that's responsible for skinny fat. Most of us are familiar with subcutaneous fat. That's the kind that sits just underneath your skin. You can pinch it on your hips or your thighs or your belly. You might even remember that old commercial that said, If you can pinch more than an inch, you may need to watch your weight. But visceral fat is a little bit different. It's not a type of fat that you can pinch or even see. It wraps around your organs, as I mentioned, your liver, your kidneys, your intestines, even sometimes your heart. And visceral fat's especially dangerous after menopause. Subcutaneous fat isn't always ideal, but visceral fat is metabolically active and much more dangerous. And one hormone in particular drives the formation of visceral fat. That hormone is insulin. When you eat, your pancreas releases insulin to shuttle glucose into your cells. That's insulin's job, helping your cells absorb blood sugar so they can use it for energy. But when your pancreas senses that your blood sugar hasn't gone down, even though it's already released insulin, the pancreas starts releasing more insulin. That ends up causing what's called hyperinsulinemia, high insulin levels in your blood. Insulin promotes fat storage, especially in your abdomen. And the more insulin you release, the harder it becomes to lose fat. It's sort of a vicious cycle. Insulin resistance means more insulin and more visceral fat, and more visceral fat causes more insulin resistance and the release of more insulin, etc. Unfortunately, this becomes especially common after menopause for women. Before you go into menopause, estrogen helps your body respond to insulin properly. But when estrogen goes down, your body, your metabolism, starts resisting the effects of insulin. It also shifts toward central fat storage, building that visceral fat. That's why so many women find themselves gaining weight after menopause, even when they haven't changed how they eat or how they exercise. It's also why restrictive eating without hormone optimization sometimes can backfire. Okay, so what can you actually do about that skinny fat, also known as insulin resistance? Here's a simple strategy that's completely free. You don't need any equipment. You don't have to get up the motivation to go to the gym. You don't need an app for your phone, and you don't need to have a new diet. Just go for a walk. But I'm not talking about just any walk. A brisk 30-minute walk after your biggest meal of the day, maybe that's dinner or supper, whatever you call it, that's one of the best things you can do to reduce insulin resistance and lower your visceral fat. And the sooner you start moving, the more you'll flatten out that post-meal blood glucose and insulin spike. Multiple studies confirm this effect. What you're doing is burning up the glucose in your bloodstream before your pancreas sort of feels the need to release a ton of insulin. That simple walk can change your metabolic trajectory. Six months ago, my wife Mary got her yearly labs back. Both of us were shocked when we looked at her insulin resistance markers. One called her fasting blood glucose was okay, and it had been okay for a while. 
But another one called hemoglobin A1C, that's a measure of your average blood sugar over the last three months, was at 5.9%. That meant that she was firmly in the insulin resistance, or also called pre-diabetes range. I talked with her about what I knew was the simplest and most effective treatment for insulin resistance. Let's take a walk after dinner. So we started doing just that, taking a long, brisk walk within about 30 or 45 minutes after our evening meal, almost every single night. We live in an extremely walkable neighborhood called Sugar House. We love to walk past the historic homes and the restaurants and the pubs and through the parks in our neighborhood. We have a beautiful college campus just a few blocks away from our house, and it's kind of on a, on a hill, a bit of a climb to get to that campus, so that helps us burn some additional glucose. Mary got her labs drawn again just a few weeks ago, and she's managed to bring her hemoglobin A1c back down below the pre-diabetic range, back into the optimal range. Her fasting insulin wasn't bad before, but it's actually come down a little bit more, so she has less of that hyperinsulinemia. Her fasting blood glucose is about the same, but as I mentioned, it was okay before. And those walks after dinner are pretty much the only thing that she changed over the last six months. Science really backs up this practice. Walking after meals lowers blood glucose and insulin levels, helping to reverse insulin resistance over time. Menopause weight gain, as I've explained in my last few videos, isn't just about calories in versus calories out, how much you eat versus how much you exercise. It's also about your hormones. Well, there are a lot of online health influencers who will tell you your weight gain is hormonal. What you don't often hear, though, is exactly which hormones are causing you to gain that weight and how that happens. If you haven't watched the previous videos in this series, I talked a little bit about the impact of thyroid-stimulating hormone, also called TSH, as well as follicle-stimulating hormone, or FSH, on menopause weight gain. And in this video, we've gone over insulin and its ability to make you fat on the inside. The goal of hormone optimization is to make sure that all your hormones are not too high and not too low, but they're just right. In the case of hormones like TSH, FSH, and now insulin, a lower level might be better than a higher one. In my next video, we're going to explore more about optimizing one hormone that holds the key to menopause weight gain. This one hormone doesn't affect TSH much, but it has a profound impact on both FSH and insulin. Getting this hormone just right might just be the solution to the belly fat and visceral fat caused by FSH and by insulin. It could solve insulin resistance and the visceral fat issues in ways no other hormone can match. Watch my next video to find out exactly which hormone holds the most important key to menopause weight gain. We'll see you then.